For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney and I'm here at the JMA booth at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona with Todd Landry. So Todd, the last time we caught up was at Mobile World Congress Americas a few months ago. That's right. You guys have been very busy in the meantime. Uh, first off, this acquisition of Phaser, this is a big deal. Tell me a little bit more about it that. It is a great deal and um, uh, very timely for us, very well aligned with uh, our overall strategy. Um, you know, we closed on the acquisition with the Phaser organization back in early December. Uh, it brings about 60 developers, the top developers in the millimeter wave uh, 5G RAN space into the organization uh, and really adds a nice addition to our overall portfolio of expertise. So we're quite proud to have them on board. So tell me a little bit more about how the acquisition of Phaser and their focus on millimeter wave frequency fits into your strategy for your XRAN product. Perfect. Well, so with XRAN, you know, we built the really the fir industry's first full virtualized RAN platform. Our focus has been on LTE for that. Uh, most of the new networks that are being deployed to bring 5G into them are going to leverage the LTE core network called the EPC. So. Um, one part of it is to have a platform that allows us to tie the phaser technology into it to utilize that EPC network to enable 5G in venues. Now, what that means for us is that we can have our technology, such as our TechoDAS and our Techo Cell Hub platform with XRAN for all the you know, existing license bands, private LTE, et cetera, all the way up through the mid bands and then add millimeter wave onto it. So it's very synergistic with what we're doing with XRAN. Uh, it is, of course, a virtualized platform for the LTE space that will evolve to some uh, 5G functionality. Uh, and then uh, the virtualization, uh, there's a virtualized layer of our phaser technology also that comes together with XRAN as part of a virtualized platform. So, very synergistic with what we're doing with X-Ring. And you know, you mentioned Cell Hub there. I, I think there's been some developments uh, in that product since the last time we spoke, right? Yeah, that is uh, ongoing. Uh, actually, we should go take a look at it. What do you think? Let's do it. So Todd, you mentioned Cell Hub there, and I, I think we're gonna learn a little bit more and take a look, right? That's right. Well, behind us are a couple of Cell Hubs mounted up on the wall. now. Uh, in typical practice in buildings, you, you probably will only deploy a single cell hub uh, in a floor of a building to service that whole building or that whole floor um, because a single cell hub is MIMO, multiple bands, multiple operators. Um, what we're showing here is we actually took two cell hubs so we could show a 4x4 MIMO solution. Uh, so we have a live demonstration using XRAN with cell hubs. Uh, in this case, these cell hubs are designed for European bands. So they have three European bands built into them, and we're showcasing how you can take European bands, 20 megahertz for each band, get 256 QAM in each band, uh, and then with 4x4 MIMO, we can carry or aggregate all that together and get over a gigabit per second performance on mobile devices. So really demonstrating how you can flexibly use the cell hub for these different types of services inside a bell, and depending on how fast you want to go. So I think you made a really important point there, Todd. We've been talking a long time vis-a-vis uh, -vis 5G about delivering a gig over the air, but it's important to remember that when you bring those LTE advanced features, 4x4 MIMO, 256 QAM, and carrier aggregation together, you can do that today. We can do that today, yeah, and uh, that's absolutely right. In fact, uh, as you know, we have uh, an important announcement this week. We were talking about some stadiums that we announced. Um, the other part that's important about it is, how do you get there, right? Uh, our cell hubs work with XRAN. Uh, with XRAN, we can deploy private networks using CBRS technology. The benefit of CBRS technology in a stadium is, or, or in any venue is that I can also turn on with software other license bands so you got a very software definable solution. So all of this is in technology we have available today uh, in the marketplace. So you mentioned some stadiums and uh, I'd like to learn a little bit more about that. Yeah, so uh, the announcement uh, you'll read today is really about uh, Stadio Olimpico uh, and Dacia Arena, both in Italy. Uh, now we made some announcements previously. Uh, in fact, a year ago we announced XRAN was live in Bologna, 
Uh, that's been running for a year now and is integrated with the surrounding network, doing hundreds of thousands of handovers on a small two-rack unit server uh, covering 40 acres in the area downtown uh, Bologna. The next big challenge was for, us, for us was to take X-Rain into highly densified stadiums. So we're really excited to have been working with Telecom Italia and we've rolled out and deployed across Stadium Olimpico uh, X-Ran. Now that's a 70 plus thousand seat stadium that hosts Premier League soccer events. Uh, so it gets quite busy. Uh, so that was the exciting news is that we've actually now taken the next level. This stuff is really being tested and uh, passing with flying colors, we're happy to say. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. We've been talking about virtualizing baseband for quite a while as an industry, but now we have proof point and at scale, as you mentioned, 70,000 right. people. That's right, it's very, very real. And, you know, our industry, um, you know, for still today in many cases, people question, you know, is virtualization possible to this level and can you really scale it? Uh, and some people, you know, think it's, it's a future thing. You know, we work in a market with our DAS platform where uh, there's plenty of our good friends out there who, who think it's a future thing. Uh, we're live with the stuff now in venues and we're live to scale, we're live and interoperable with all the surrounding networks uh, and we're live taking, uh, delivering performance that is greater than what they've ever seen. And then one other thing that jumped out at me in reading some of the information about XRAN is the time to deployment. You know, when you think about a traditional DAS, you're talking weeks maybe, but what's the differentiator here? Yeah, and it's, you're, it's, it's probably one of the things that shocks the traditional e B people the most. Um, they're used to days and weeks on a site, wiring a lot of coax cable, um, a lot of scripts and things that have to be set up to get an e B running. Um, when they're on a site with our server and within an hour or two we're up and running and connected to the network, it tends to take people by shock. So we've done analysis on sites and showcased with math the reduction of the time to deploy substantially, probably 70, 80 percent of the time you would spend. So, you, so that means a significant reduction in time it takes to get a site up, significant reduction in the resources to get it up, uh, not to mention reduction in other things, right? So we've talked about power, cooling. Uh, we take tons of that away, which means that 70, 80% of your, your power costs are gone, right? Really green, really changes what it means in the market for customers. So we've talked a lot about XRAN. Why don't we uh, go take a look at it? Sounds good. You know, I'm sure a lot of our viewers have seen a traditional eNode B and this is most certainly not a traditional ENOB. So right. tell me what's behind this here. Well, and, and it's a great point because when you see an ENOB, it looks very complicated. There's a lot of a, a ancillary equipment to support it, a lot of cabling, it's very proprietary. You know, when you see XRAN, it looks more like a part of a data center. So you can see here, we actually have two servers running. So this is a standard two rack unit server, typically of what you might find racked up in a data center. Um, on one of these servers, we have our XRAN baseband running. This is talking directly over fiber to the cell hubs we looked at and empowering the performance that we're showcasing in here. So with the performance here, typically the um, theoretical best case performance is a little over 1.1 gig to the phone. Uh, with a test we can look at with like Ookla, uh, speed test, which everybody's familiar with, you're going to see, you know, 800, 900 megabits per second. For most people, going 800, 900 megabits per second on a mobile device is pretty screaming fast, right? Um, we have a second server here. This is actually running the uh, Evolve Packet Core network. Uh, we actually run the Ookla speed test server locally, so you can run a local test uh, without going over the internet. Uh, so, so all of the EPC and stuff runs on one server, and all of XRAN runs here. Incidentally, uh, in downtown Bologna, this is about the same size server that's running 40 acres of downtown area, taking hundreds of thousands of handovers every day. 
You know, and we talk a lot in this industry about future-proofing things because the technology upgrade cycles seem to be coming quicker and quicker. When you take this software-based approach, you give yourself a lot of flexibility in terms of updating your infrastructure. Not only updating infrastructure, which the ability to do it with software is really key, right? Um, but adding capabilities. So let's take CBRS as an example. We're the only vendor in the industry that's really implemented the CBRS radio function in software. And what that means is that I can have a venue like a stadium where maybe I want to use CBRS channels for one event for sideline communications, uh, maybe for replays, uh, maybe I want to use it for my tenants like retail, uh, maybe my ticketing front end and get that all on wireless. When I have another event, maybe I want to reprogram how I use the channels on CBRS and use it for different use cases because now it's a concert versus a, a sporting game. With software, it allows me the ability to set up profiles, change configurations, do updates, as you said, or add new functionality. You know, maybe I deploy um, license bands in a, in a venue to start, and then I want to turn on CBRS. In a traditional world and every other product out there, I have to send a team in, I have to wire new infrastructure, I have to bolt up more devices in the ceiling. With XRAN and Cell Hub, I turn the switch on some software, and you're live. And as we transition from LTE, LTE Advanced onto 5G, this is a key piece. This is a key piece. Now, as part of XRAN, we will have the ability to go take certain bands, maybe it's a 20 megahertz band, and turn on the 5G NR radio in software. Um, maybe it's a, a band like 2500, which has uh, additional capacity in it, and we can do 100 megahertz of that and get more capacity on that band. So it's a, a key piece of the overall 5G strategy that we have. Uh, 5G isn't just about speed either, it's about getting to a virtualized network that is more efficient, easier to operate, uh, easier to manage and deploy. Uh, so the software piece is a critical piece of that. All right, well we've talked about 5G a little bit. We mentioned phaser earlier, so right. maybe let's go take a deeper dive on that. Oh, perfect, let's do that. So Todd, we talked about XRAN, we talked about Cell Hub, and now I was hoping you could kind of tie this all together for me and explain how those fit together with your phaser acquisition and what that does for JMA's strategy. Perfect, so with phaser, uh, one of the things we're doing right now is um, putting the technology into form factors that are fit for these venues, right? So if you look at the hotspots for early 5G, a lot of the affluent users, early buyers of new devices, it's logical they're gonna be the people that attend sporting events, that work in city environments, in business offices, and they want those mobile devices to go screaming fast for what they do every day. So um, this is an example of our uh, indoor and outdoor phaser platform. Uh, we have two slightly different variations on a spec sheet but the key thing is that this can mount inside of an office environment, so you can easily add this on to an existing in-building solution that wants the addition of millimeter wave technology inside that office building. In addition, it might be in a stadium. So you can see it's got a very small footprint. What's unique about it is that I can bring IP connectivity directly to it. So I don't have a lot of fiber interfaces, I don't need a lot of dark fiber, I can use standard networking equipment to wire these into the ceiling of an arena, and I can create millimeter wave beam spots around the whole ball very, very easily with multiple bands uh, of millimeter wave. Uh, now, why does that tie into the rest of what we're doing? If we look at in-building environments that have our TechoDAS platform today and are covering the range of 600 megahertz up into the mid-bands, we're adding CBRS to that with XRAN, and the missing piece of the puzzle to get up into the next wave of higher mid-bands and millimeter wave is really the edge antenna with uh, the phaser technology. So if you look at it, what's uh, really exciting for us, especially in the U.S. market where there's a lot of push for 5G innovation from our government administration, uh, we really are now the first American company that has stepped up and put together a complete portfolio for the edge of the network, 
RAND solutions with millimeter wave all the way down into current license bands so we can address the full spectrum. Uh, so very, very exciting for us in a complete portfolio for the marketplace. Yeah, and I think this is important because there's been a lot of skepticism about the feasibility of in-building 5G at millimeter wave frequencies. As we've seen over the course of the show so far, the phones are there, the handsets are ready to hit the market. So, I mean, it looks like you guys are well positioned here to open up the whole 5G landscape once the uh, carriers scale up their networks. Yeah, I believe you're right. And, uh, you know, it was an important part of the chiming, starting to bring this all together. Uh, we have the first handsets coming out this year with uh, Samsung and Motorola. Uh, we're going to see others like Apple come into play, you know, uh, allegedly in sometime next year. Uh, so once these phones start to hit the market and we see real demand from the user side, uh, you need to have the right infrastructure. And that's what we built, the right infrastructure. Well, Todd, I really appreciate you taking the time to update us on all the activity JMA's had since the last time we spoke. Always appreciate it, Sean. Good to see you. Thank you.